Hardival. You taking notes there, Z-Man, for the history book? Hell, I'd rather be uh, lucky than good any day. <laughs> Spoken like a true geriatric. Hey, man, I'm not the one driving a Pinto. <laughs> Range controller, this is Gator 1 and 2, heading back into base. Listen, Z-Man, I'm a little low on fuel here, so I'm gonna have to skip the usual four plane. Just say I beat your butt again. Sorry, Hardballs, I'm afraid I've heard that story before. Come on, let's go home. I don't want you running out of gas up here. Last one down by. Wake up, sis. It's late. What time is it? It's almost four. <sighs> oh, man. Are you all right? I had the weirdest dream. I met Ted Hardival in 1976. It was a time when most of us were trying to figure out what we wanted, and Ted was already training to be the hottest pilot in the Air Force. And when I saw him, I knew what I wanted. I was 21 and working my way through college at the Air Force bar. And we fell in love. And we figured all our dreams were gonna come true. Eat or drink? What do you think? But in one moment, everything changed. I lost Ted. This is a story of a cover-up. It's a story of power and betrayal. This is one for all of us. dinner, you name it, it's your. What do you want to drink? Jan, darling, now we just spent the last two hours strapped to a rocket, pulling Ooh. enough cheese to make your little head spin. And I, for one, am gonna need a whole lot more than just a drink. Fine, what'll it be? How about you? Mm. How about you? <laughs> hey, my life story. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. All right. yeah. 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 All right. It's all around, and uh, I'll keep running to you. Ted? Johnny Walker, right on the rocks, please. Mitzi, you want something? You know, I would just die for that peach drink with the cute name. Fuzzy Navel. Yeah, that's it. Isn't that the cutest name you ever heard? That's adorable. Wait a minute. I want it with rum instead of vodka. Even more adorable. Mm. <laughs> hey, Fuzzy. <it>. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Three drafts, a pitcher, Johnny Walker Red, and uh, Fuzzy Navel for the fuzzy brain over there. She wants rum instead of vodka. How cute. Do me a favor, use 151, put an extra shot in it. <laughs> you gotta admit, that was pretty good today, man. Yeah. Yeah, after she finished that jet fuel, she wasn't feeling any pain at all.
<laughs> Think you could get me a drink? Bar's closed. Yeah? Well, what are you still doing here? I'm supposed to be someplace else? Oh, I don't know. Home with the husband, maybe? Boyfriend's apartment? Late date? Blue. Something wrong with you? How much time you got? So you're gonna fix me this drink or what? You trying to get me fired or what? Well, I might make my dates a little easier. Oh, yeah, so how is Ditsy anyway? Mitzi. Oh. I took her home. She had a little too much to drink. Wow, only had one. Congratulations, Hardival. You finally found yourself a cheap date. Boy. You do have a mouth on you, don't you? Now, how do you expect to snag a husband talking like that, huh? My husband's gonna be the first guy who comes along who isn't afraid of that. Are most guys? Well, you tell me. Do you have an answer for everything? I make sure of it. Yeah? Well, tell me something. What do you say when a guy asks you out on a date? I take great pleasure in presenting to you my personal congratulations on your selection as junior officer of the quarter. This singular recognition is a tribute to your professional expertise and dedication to the important tactical mission of this fighter wing. Well done, Captain. to have 14,000 pounds of thrust between your legs. Oh, it's a little less than what I'm used to, but it'll do. <laughs> How fast can she go? Mach 2. Falls out of the sky at 160 miles an hour. Drops like a manhole cover. What's this? That, my darling, engages the afterburner. I have never figured out what the afterburner is. Could you tell me, even though I work there, I have no clue. Well, in the back of the engine, there's um, all these little holes that line it. And when you need a burst of speed, you push that forward, and all this fuel sprays out of the holes. And whatever speed you're going like that, you're going 50% faster. Mach 1 to Mach 1, 5. What does that feel like? I don't know, kind of rockets you forward, slams you back all at once. Then you get married. You're strange. some jeans on or something we can go out. Shortcut. <laughs> I'll live here with my sister. Let's see if she's home. Mayor? Mary? <clears throat> here is outside. Nice, huh? I'm gonna go change, I'll be right back. Oh, I 
zipper's stuck. And... <clears throat> Can you get it? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm almost ready. I just gotta unstick my zipper. It's very stuck. I know. <laughs> hey, I thought pilots were supposed to have good hands. We do. I think if we uh, took your jeans off. So you're going to do that now? Skirt off. You will. Uh, really think you should. Okay. Uh oh. What? Your zipper's. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do if I couldn't fly. It's hard to explain, really. It's one of those things, you know, you just gotta do it to really understand what it's like. I mean, you got this totally wild and dangerous thing. And you got total control over it. All that open sky to do it in. So you're gonna take me for a ride in it or what? Assuming we ever leave your apartment again. Oh, shit. Oh, shoot. Don't worry about it. I'm my whole set. Come on. That's my mom's. A toast to Janet and Ted Hardival. May all your joys be true joys, and may all your pain be champagne. <laughs> Bye, baby. <laughs>
Janet, how Hi. are you? Good Enjoy. to see you. Nice very well. Thank you very much. Hey, Carol. So, how are you doing? Good to see Look you. Look at you. Hello. Excuse me, ladies. Yeah. Long time no see. Yeah. You missed our last three lunches. Oh, I've been really busy lately, so. Look, Janet, I know you have a great disdain for what it is that we do. But I'm telling you, this is a friend. It's far easier to give in than to try and fight it. Carol, let me ask you something. Don't you ever just want to hang out with the guys, you know, get blasted, talk about jets? I mean, what's the point of marrying the military if you can't have fun, right? Got it? Excuse me. Yeah. They're taking a bunch of us up to the Eglin base in April. We're going to fire a live rocket. Well, you're not going. I'm not. Hey, Flyboy, you already fired a live rocket. And it's due by Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Janet. Yeah. Behavior like that is not going to get Ted promoted. <laughs> That's great, you know? I always thought Ted could do it on his own. Excuse me. Tell you what kind of rocks, please. How about a Perrier instead? Carl Haller, flight surgeon. Janet Hardival, Air Force wife. Oh, I think if that was all there was to you, you would have had a much easier time back then. Yeah, well, my life doesn't revolve around clothing and recipes. It seems I should apologize for that. Oh, no, no, not at all. It's rather refreshing, really. You know, you remind me of my wife. Oh, where is she? Oh, she passed away quite some time ago. But you would have liked it. Gentlemen, you're here today because you're the best of the best. You were hand-picked to be the first fighter pilots to fly the F-16 operationally. You'll work your asses off while you're here. But when you finish the course, you will know this jet better than you know yourselves. This is the General Dynamics F-16. It's the first fully electronic jet fighter, the most complex and maneuverable in the world. Ten tons of steel and 11 miles of wire in her belly. This is the HUD. In the F-16, your instrumentation and aircraft flight data are projected on the HUD. The heads-up display in front of your face. Wireless test control, Gamble 02, ready to begin instrument test now. Roger, Gamble 02, proceed Vector 7. Checking HUD. Checking primary and standby attitude indicators. Gamble 02 rolling inverted now. Roger 02, we have you on radar. Pulling the nose through. God, this baby is beautiful. It's our little kitty, darling. Hold on, birthday girl. Look, Daddy, I'm flying. Yeah, you were born pilot, Kiki. All right, throw to me. You see what happened? Huh? Well, that's just what it's like when you're flying. You see, you lose your balance and you can't trust your eyes. That's why you got to look at your instruments. <laughs> Look at him over there. Man could drop a nuke on a dime, but when it comes to a kid's, it turns to mush. He's gonna really miss her, you know. Ted, can I talk to you for a minute? Diane, would you keep an eye on Kiki?
What's up? So what were you gonna tell me? Tonight. Why don't you tell me now? I gotta go to Korea. I gotta go for a year. So it's a year this time, huh? <laughs> when do you leave? A week from today. It's a remote training mission. I'm supposed to say I understand, right? I understand. I knew that eventually this was gonna happen. You know, I don't know if I can do this. What is that supposed to mean? I don't know if I can do this anymore. What is this? This! Now, come on, Jan. We made a deal, remember? Yeah, well, I don't know how to be a grown-up about this, okay? You know, I was flying for three years before I even met you. And now I get the dream assignment of my life. You're telling me I can't go? No. I don't want you to leave me. That's all. <laughs> this is what I do, Jan. And this is G's, baby. I'm gonna cook you a mushroom, Mom. <laughs> Kiki? Honey, come here. Don't run, sweetheart. Come on. Can Daddy have a kiss? Got one more? I love you, sweetheart. I love you, Daddy. You better give the bear a kiss. Okay. Mm, here we go. Hey, you take care of your big jet, okay?
Am I a widow? All we know is that Ted's plane is missing. Did he eject? Did I see a shoot? Uh, no. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything, Janet. We will just have to wait. Kiki, hon, you be a good girl in school today. Y'all drive careful now, all right? Bye-bye. Sorry, honey. He's gone. I, I, I gotta get Kiki. No, no. I gotta get Kiki. No, no, Kiki! No, no, no. He's my little baby. He's gone. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, good luck. I'm calling in a second target. Suddenly, Ted cuts in. Knock it off. Knock it off. I got a problem. Join on me. That's all he said? That's it. I tried to radio him. No answer. Price is like he just pushed his stick forward and drove it straight into the ground. Colonel, he said there was a problem. His engines and his flight controls must have been working. He was an afterburner, for Christ's sake. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Hardival. Yeah. Colonel Houston calling from Korea. Oh, yeah. I'm heading up the safety investigation of your husband's crash. Well, did they find the seat data recorder? Ma'am, we're not permitted to disclose any of those findings. Why are you calling me, then? <laughs> <clears throat> Ma'am, I hate to do this, but uh, I must ask you some questions. I need to know if Captain Hardival was a marijuana user. <laughs> no, Captain Hardival was not a marijuana user. Well, did he have any history of... Depression, or did he appear mentally unstable at any time? Are, are you saying to me that you think my husband committed suicide? Ma'am, it's just that we have to investigate every possibility. Did you know him? Did you know Ted? Because, man, this is fucking bullshit. This is bullshit. <laughs> Guard, all ten, who? Port, who? F3, who? Red, aim, fire! Aim, fire! Aim, fire! All ten, who? F12, who? Present, who? Guard, port,
need some time alone, Kiki and I can go on ahead. It wasn't his fault. I'm not coming back here till I prove that. <sighs> Come on, baby girl. Let's go home. Excuse me, Janet. Uh, Annette and I just want to extend our sympathies. The Air Force lost a good pilot and a good friend. Thank you. Just remember, you're not alone in this. The Air Force takes care of its own. Yeah, well, take a look at the rule book, Colonel. They've given me and my kid two weeks to get off the base. I'm sorry about that, Janet. Truly, I am. I just want you to know you're welcome to visit anytime you like. Oh, don't worry. You'll be seeing me because I intend to find out what happened. Oh, my dear, now, it's not your job to worry about that. It's a hell of a lot more than anybody else is doing. Now, Janet, remember, you're an Air Force wife. No, I'm an Air Force widow. Mrs. Hardival, I'm Jeff Maxwell, Channel 6 News. Here's my card. If you ever need any help, just call me. See way up there, up in the sky? Yeah. That's where your daddy is. That's heaven. Will it be here when Santa Claus comes? Mm -mm. Your daddy's not coming back, honey. Not ever. Why? Remember when I told you that his plane fell down and your daddy died? Did it hurt? Mm -mm. It didn't hurt. What if he doesn't like it up there? Sweetheart, come here. you very much. You know that, don't you? I think he's gonna miss you so much. Come here. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Oh, I think those are books. This might be dishes, I don't know. Look, we leave in two weeks. If there's anything you need. Don't make promises you can't keep. There's only one thing I need, and nobody will give it to me. If you're talking about the accident report, I can't help you. Why not? What are you trying to hide, huh? Nothing, Janet. Look, the only people who can figure out what caused Ted's crash are the people who built the airplane. Thermal dynamics. They have the expertise, so it is essential that they assist us in the investigation. Whatever they find out, we will guard as privileged information. So let me get this straight. They tell you what's wrong with the airplane, and you agree to keep it privileged? That's the policy. No, that's the cover-up, man, and it sucks. Look, Janet, that's the way the system works. That's the military, like it or not. That's the only way we're going to find out what caused Ted's crash. So you can find out? What gives you people the right to know more about my husband's death than I do, huh? So what about you? Have you read it? Did you read it? Don't ask. What do you mean, don't ask? You're my friend. Jan, I cannot talk about this. Are they blaming Ted? Look, let's just get your stuff and get the hell out of here, all right? Fuck them. I lost Ted. They know why. Channel 6 
reporter Jeff Maxwell gives us a preview of the problems that have plagued the F-16 and the men who fly them. Those problems have resulted in 33 crashes, nine pilot deaths, and two groundings since 1978. Jan, come here, quick. Come here! has been plagued with minor and major mechanical problems since it was first introduced. But critics say it also has a seriously flawed engine that could cost American lives in combat. Is that the same reporter from the funeral? Despite this, the Air Force still believes that the F-16 is among the finest fighter planes in the world. But is the F-16 as good as it could have been? And is it safe for the pilots who fly it? Please join me tomorrow night for the first in a five-part series entitled The F-16, The Right Stuff? This is Jeff Maxwell, Channel 6 News, San Pedro. sent you the accident report. Uh, disorientation, here we go. Let's see. Pilot error. Pilot error. Bastards, you knew they'd blame the whole thing on Ted. Bastards. Who would have taken the risk to send me this? They probably saw the news report. God, I wonder what else they know. Disorienting during flight. Love that. Love that. Jen? Yeah. I think you better come take another look at this. Oh, uh, no. Well, I'm not sure, but I think this is saying that Ted's instruments are fucked up. See, read this line about the attitude indicators, right? Oh, uh, primary indicated 65 degrees nose low at impact. Backup showed 40 degrees nose high. Do either of those sound right to you? No, those are way off. We know he hit that mountain going straight down. I'm gonna call that reporter. A secret Air Force accident report says the primary causes of Captain Ted Hardival's fatal crash were instrument failure and pilot error. The instruments the Air Force investigation pinpointed are called attitude indicators. In bad weather, F-16 pilots use the gauges to tell whether they're going up or down, but the indicators pulled from the wreck of Hardival's F-16 had widely differing readings. The main attitude direction indicator showed the plane going down 65 degrees but the standby attitude indicator said it was going up 40 degrees. Despite that, investigators believe Hardival still could have made it if he'd looked down at his instruments earlier. They've concluded he somehow got disoriented in the foul weather and didn't begin checking his instruments until it was too late. And Ted would talk about how important it was to fly to your instruments, that you couldn't trust your eyes. And he was trying to explain what vertigo was and how that regardless of what your eyes told you, you had to fly your instruments. And he was the best instrument pilot there was. And the top secret report indeed acknowledges that the two instruments were in drastic conflict. And though the Air Force maintains that Captain Hardival was an experienced enough pilot to be able to handle such a problem, the questions still remain. What exactly caused the problem? And could it have been avoided? Yeah. Colonels Mays and Pearson, we'd like to have a few words with you. Uh -huh. uh, Ma'am, we're here uh, because of a certain news piece that was aired regarding your husband's crash. It's caused a great deal of concern for the Pentagon. Yeah, well, for me, too. How come a reporter gets to see that kind of information and I don't? Well, ma'am, we did not give him that report. Well, who did? That's what we're here to find out. Boy, oh, boy. You guys got a lot of nerve, don't you? Ever since my husband died, I've been begging the Air Force to give me some answers. And when they finally send some people up to my doorstep, it's to accuse me of exposing your little cover-up. Mrs. Hardival, I assure you, nothing is being covered up. Uh-huh, what about those instruments? A very minor problem your husband should have been able to handle. It couldn't possibly have caused him the crash. Are you sure about that? Yes, I'm sure. This isn't just about my husband's death. This is about every one of those guys that goes up in an F-16, and if there's something wrong with that plane, I think we better both know what happened. Mrs. Hardival, 
The Air Force conducted a very thorough investigation. Now, I sympathize with you, but you're going to have to understand that flying jets is a risky occupation. Oh. And uh, this equipment is sophisticated, it's tricky, and if not handled properly, it's dangerous. Mm hmm Even in times of peace, there's always going to be a certain number of uh, acceptable losses. I'm sorry, Colonel. My loss is not acceptable. I want you to get this deposition over to Thompson right away. Go on, Mrs. Hardeman. My husband didn't get stupid. I think the Air Force knows that. So what? You can't fight the Air Force. Why not? Law says you can't sue the military. Oh, then I'll sue General Dynamics. Is that right? I want those records changed. The only way the Air Force might do it is if General Dynamics admits there's some kind of design problem in that jet. If they won't admit it, we'll get a jury to admit it for them. I understand. If you want to clear your husband's name. Yeah. And exactly how much cash do you want to go along with that? I'm not in this for the money. I'm very proud of you, young lady. It's very noble. But I think we'd better get one thing straight. Causes, charity, publico pro bono. None of that stuff is in my dictionary. If I wanted to be poor, I'd be a pilot still flying the wild blue yonder. So you're saying you won't take this unless I sue for money? Mrs. Hardwell, I'm an air accident attorney. A lot of people say I'm the best. Pick an airline. I've taken them to court. But in all the history of litigation, nobody, and I mean nobody, has successfully sued a defense contractor the size of General Dynamics. They have too much money and too much political clout. Oh, don't you think it's about time somebody did? Listen, I, I get this feeling inside, and it's like I know, I can feel it. I know we're going to win this. Something's got to change. Besides, we got the proof. You read the report. On the last page, the Air Force talks about the uh, attitude indicator. They're actually implying there's a defect. No. They're implying the possibility of a defect. Big difference. Not if it killed my husband. You're a lovely young lady, Mrs. Audible. And you're tough. But I'm afraid that's not good enough. <laughs> what? Assuming you took the case. Yeah? Assuming you had the guts to be the first lawyer ever to take on General Dynamics, what would you need to start? If I had the guts. Yeah. Well... It was an instrument problem, right? Yeah. Yes, I need the maintenance records on the navigation unit. Maintenance records on the navigation unit. That's right. They might tell us something. I'll go get them. Then we'll talk. Have a good golf game. <laughs> This is the third time I've been denied that information. Mrs. Hardival, General Dynamics cannot furnish you with the documents unless you furnish us with the specifics. I told you, I specifically want the maintenance records on the navigation unit. And I told you, before we can pull those records, we need the manufacturer's name, the model, and the equipment number. How the hell am I supposed to know that? I didn't build the goddamn airplane you did. Nice. Nice. Boy, they really go high, don't they? Wanna do another one? Yeah. Okay, push them down. Okay, ready? Yeah. Go. So, well, you got one that time. I, didn't I only got one. Oh, jeez. Yeah. What do you think of Bill? Seems nice. We each got one now. Um, 
Look, I waited to tell you this because I know it's going to make you crazy, but uh, he works at Wallace in the General Dynamics building. What? Look, don't bust a gut. He's just an Air Force rep. He's a peon, Janet. He doesn't know anything about Ted or your case. Jesus, Mary. Come on, don't spoil it for me, huh? Seriously, he's the... He's the first decent guy I've met in a really long time. Promise me that you'll be nice. Okay, get the turkey. Promise me that you'll be nice. Okay. Well, I got one that time. Just get the turkey. Okay, guys. Dinner's on. Okay. Kiki. Pretty, huh? Okay. Okay, did you do the honors? So, Bill, Mary hasn't told me much about you. What do you do? I'm Air Force liaison to General Dynamics. Well, you seem pretty sure yourself for a man treading on enemy territory. Janet? Excuse me? You don't know who I am? Not everybody knows who you are, Janet. Her husband was killed in an F-16. She's taking General Dynamics to court. I'm sorry, I, I had no idea. Look, uh, I'm dying to talk to somebody who's on the inside and knows this stuff. I need to find out what happened to Ted's instruments. I need some information on the navigation unit. If I get that, General Dynamics has got to turn the records over to me. Janet, I'd like to help you. But honestly, that's not the kind of information I can just hand over to you. Mm -hmm. You could let me in your office, turn your back, and I could take all I need to know. Come on. I'll sell you my sister. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please understand. Anyway, I I'm on vacation this week, and I won't be in the office for a while. Grace? Everybody? What the hell are we doing here? We're being creative. Stupid is more like it. Come on. I've got to get more information on the navigation unit so Lee will take the case. This is crazy. You know that. Come on. Just reach inside and find that bimbo, Mary. You can That's do not it. my thing. <laughs> Um, Bill Decker around? No, he's away for the week. Oh, Ken. God, that is so weird. He told us to come by and visit. Oh. Well, I, I mean, he just, he wanted us to see his office. He's always yeah. talking about how cool it is, yeah. all this stuff he gets. Yeah. No. Oh, God, I wasn't kidding. Chrissy, look at all of these books. Oh, oh, no, those aren't books, those are catalogs. Oh. oh. You mean like to order clothes and shit? <laughs> no, no, you see, we designed the planes, and, and the parts that go into it are listed in the catalog. So, like, if we gave you a part or something, you just look it up, and that's how you know what... Well, yeah. Now, of course, it's privileged information. Oh. Privileged! <laughs> <laughs> Could we try so, that, just for the fun of it? Uh, I... Oh, yeah, oh, it would be, be so, so cool fun. to watch you do it. Could please. you just see that? Oh, please! <laughs> Could you? Please. It would be so cool, just like... Sure, one... go ahead. Name any part. <gasps> oh, I know. That, what's the name of that big plane that he's always talking about? That not that the F-16? F-16? The, the thing on the F-16. The I-O-U. I-U-D. <laughs> no, no, that's the I-N-U. Right. Oh, yeah, Inertial yeah. Navigation yeah. Unit. Yeah. Of course, it differs according to the assembly block, so okay. I need a tail number. Um, any four digits. Any four digits. Any four digits. Um, mm -hmm. Zero. zero. <laughs> <laughs> We're psychic. Zero, six. Uh, my favorite number, nine. Two. Zero, six, nine, two. Yeah. That's easy. Block 15. That's easy. It's easy. Cool. Okay. okay. Here we are. This is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I knew. Oh, look at all that stuff. Numbers, man. Okay, here we are. 
Okay, now the INU for that plane was built by Singer Kerfoot. Kerfoot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> poor guy. What a bad name. <laughs> you see, the, the manufacturer's name is here, and then over in this column is the model and the government furnished equipment number. Ah, oh, that's cool. so cool, that stuff. <laughs> you know what? I just got the best idea. Bill is always like playing games with us, like put, putting a wager on us, which we really never want to pay off. <laughs> Thank you. And if we knew this information, if it would could, like, blow write it down. his butt and just we're like, <laughs> oh, spring yeah, it on. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be Can so we write cool. this down? Oh, okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. That's so great. You're so cool. <laughs> God, what a big um, office. What's that? Maintenance records on the navigation unit. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. So, what's your fee? My fee? I usually get a third of whatever I win for a client. Tell you what, you keep in mind I'm not in this for the money, and I'll keep in mind you are in this for the money. Fair enough? Good. Now that we've agreed, where do we start? Let's go meet the bastards. Mr. Ryder, you and I both know those instruments were malfunctioning. Captain Hartleville's last words were knock it off. I've got a problem. Yes, well, it's our opinion that this uh, so-called problem was an allergic reaction to the drugs he was taking. Drugs? Surely you were aware that your husband was taking Bactrim for his prostatitis. Jesus Christ. First he's a pothead, then he's trying to commit suicide, now he's ODing on antibiotics. I sent you the doctor's statement. Captain Hardeville never had a reaction to Bacter in his life, and even if he did, the doctor took him off the pills three days before the flight. Well, uh, the bottle they found in his room had two pills remaining. Now, if he'd stopped taking the drugs when the doctor ordered, there'd been a lot more than two in there. He always took a double dosage on the first day. The pathology report indicated no Bacter was found in his tissue. Well, that's easily disputed considering how little of his body was recovered for testing. Excuse me. You prescribed back from to him at least two or three times, right? Right. And he never had any side effects or anything? No. And you know he always doubled the dosage on the first day? Of course I knew. I okayed it. I was aware of it, sure. I need you to testify at that trial. It's my only chance. Uh, sure, Janet. You know I'd do anything in the world for you. Okay? Hey. Why are you looking so scared for? If that's their only defense, you got nothing to worry about. You're sitting pretty. Hmm. Hmm? You sent me that accident report, didn't you? Carl Haller. Just a little while ago. Honey, what's the matter? Sweetheart, what's it? What is it? Kiki, come here. Kiki! What happened? You forgot to pick her up. I uh, came across oh. her about halfway down the block. I forgot, damn. Shame on you. Oh, Misty, man. What do you say we make it up to her? Take her out for some ice cream or something, okay? 
Hey, later, Z, I can't. I gotta get through all this stuff. I mean, you should have seen Mary and me. You would have laughed your balls off. We just walked into General Dynamics and then I got all this stuff. When are you gonna stop with all this? Can I get some answers? To what? Didn't this report tell you why he died? Didn't it? No. It tells me how he died. Why is somewhere in all this stuff? For Christ's sake, Jan. No pilot is gonna crash just because his backup indicator was defective. Now, whatever happened to him up there is God's little secret. And that's the way it's gonna stay. What happened to you, man? What are you now, an Air Force clone, huh? No. Nothing happened to me. But I'm just a little bit concerned with what's happening to you. Oh, don't worry. Nothing's happened to me. It's when you give two shits about anything the Air Force ever had to say anyway. Since they started blaming Ted. Look, man, I, I can't figure it out, all right? It's not making sense to me. But Ted had 15 seconds to pull the ejection handle, right? Yeah. And he didn't do it. He didn't get out because that's the kind of guy he was. He tried to save his plane. Ted took a risk, and he lost. He let you go, Jan. He let you go. Now, why can't you do the same? You don't understand. You're fine. I don't understand. I don't understand. There is nothing in this world that can make me understand you. Throwing your life away like this. He came home in a bus. I know. You want to know what was in it? You want to know the only part of him they could find? His hands, he. I buried a fucking hand. Janet, tell me, what do you want to know? What is it that would have caused his instruments to fail? Oh, well, Janet, we're talking about the F-16. Right. All right, so chances are it's in this electrical system. Mm -hmm. You know, bad connectors, bad wires. Check this out. What you have here is your main AC buses, all right? right? Now, its job is to provide power to the flight instruments through this major bungle right here. Look who's here. Janet. Hey, Carol, Susie. Don't you have anything better to do than come here and waste people's time? Oh, I didn't realize I was. Janet, they think you're a joke. Stop it. You keep screaming something's wrong with the F-16, people are gonna start to believe you. And if some of those people happen to be our husbands, I don't have to tell you that the only thing keeping those guys in one piece up there is their nerve. And if they start to lose that, you're gonna have a hell of a lot more crashes to deal with than just hits. Hey, I'm a joke, right? So what are you worried about? Excuse me. Hey. 
What are you doing here? Um, we got some bad news. You might want to sit down. Why don't you tell me? Carl Haller died last night. How? Car accident. A tough break, kid. The trial is three weeks away. Without Alice's testimony, we're gonna get our asses kicked in. So I've been talking it over with Mary. We think that you should call Bill. I mean, now that you have all the documents, he could probably help you figure them out. Now, I know you don't trust anybody connected with the general dynamics, but we gotta find something and find it fast. Bill's a good guy. I know. Take Kiki and go, all right? Okay, come on, honey. Kiki, let's go for a walk. Call you later, sweetheart. Sounded upset. Really? I must be losing my touch. Sound desperate. I heard you like donuts. All right. Listen, I didn't design the F-16, but I do know something about its electrical systems. And your your answer is right here in the maintenance reports for Ted's plane. Well, I read them again and again, but. Well, then you saw that little thing about the EEC light coming on. Yeah. EEC stands for electric engine control. When that light comes on in the cockpit, it means your engine's gonna go out and you have five minutes to get back to base. Yeah, so? So according to these records, the light kept coming on in Ted's plane during flight. But when the mechanics checked the jet out back on the ground, they couldn't find anything wrong with it. Well, wait a minute. Are you saying there's some kind of electrical failure that only happens during flight? Exactly. Who is it? Who is it? It's me, Z. Oh, Jesus Christ. I could have shot you. You still can. What are you doing here? Well, I'll tell you. I've just spent most of the time since I've seen you last trying to come up with some clever or witty way of saying I'm sorry. <laughs> the only trouble was that I thought some bourbon might help me think. It didn't. So you get these instead. 
<laughs> you didn't need to apologize to me. You know me better than that. I do. And I know Ted better than that, too. Christ, he loved you, Jan. <sighs> he loved you. And I don't believe for one minute that he let you go. All those answers you want, well, I want them too. I can't let go of him until I finish this thing. <laughs> Mia. Z. Didn't you ever wonder if I might be right? If I did. I wouldn't be flying. Roger, copy, Joker. What's your position? Uh, Squawky and I then currently level uh, one four thousand. I'm blind here. And I'm blind. No copy, Joker. Say again, altitude. Come in, Joker. 
Joker, come in. Joker, do you read me? Kennedy didn't even try. Now tell me what you know. We don't have enough time to get through all of this. So, Leo, how'd you get all this stuff, huh? Leo. Hello, the future, except my sleeve. Besides, haven't you noticed I can be pretty goddamn charming when I want to be? Ooh, I noticed. <laughs> uh, what's in here? Tapes. Jan. Yeah. Ted's tail number 0692. Mm hmm. That was production block 15, right? Yeah. Marin, look at this. Okay. A few weeks before the crash, seven planes on the Block 15 assembly line were found to have a potential wiring problem. There was a possibility that the cables could have been cut by some protruding screws. It was one of the planes, Ted? Mm-mm. 0692 was already on its way to Korea by then. Jesus. That's it. It's wire chafing. That's why his EEC light kept coming on. What are you talking about? Well, when other pilots took Ted's plane up, they uh, reported that the electrical engine control light kept going on. But, but when the mechanics had the plane back on the ground, they couldn't find anything wrong with it. You see, wire chafing would only occur when the plane was in flight, when those wires are straining under the force of six Gs. And if that middle screw cut into the insulation, touched the bare wire, short circuit, the whole cockpit will light up like a Christmas tree. The other pilots landed safely, right? Yes, but those were just warning lights. The next time Ted takes the plane up, that protruding screw has sawed deeper into those wires. Total electrical failure. Which means the instruments went out. We got them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we do. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that check is on the table. Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't mean we're going to settle. Sure, we're going to settle. Well, will they admit it wasn't pilot error? They're not going to admit a damn thing. Jan, let's think about this for a second. I mean, this could be a lot of money. Hey, if they don't concede some negligence, how are we going to get the Air Force to realize there's a problem? The only problem you have is how far are you going to get on Ted's pension? Settle. Buy yourself and Kiki a new life. Don't you want to give her a future? Yeah. Wouldn't that mean more to Ted than some word change on his file? Your planes are still going down. No, we're talking about Ted's plane. I I'm convinced there's not a pilot in the world that could have handled the chaos that went on in that cockpit. And I'd love to get those bastards, string them up in front of a jury. But we can't prove that it was wire chafing. And even if we did, it wouldn't explain why Ted didn't eject. Trust me on this. If you go to trial, you're really taking your chances. Yeah. But I like being an underdog. Colonel, 
we know, and you know, there are wire-chafing problems in the F-16 jets. What we don't know is why Captain Hardville flew his F-16 into the ground. That's why we need to use the simulator. I need to fly those last 15 seconds with Ted to see what went wrong. This matter is between you and General Dynamics. I cannot grant you access to that simulator if we are to remain neutral. Colonel, I spent the last year and a half of my life trying to find out what happened to my husband. Two days ago, I finally found out what killed him. It wasn't Bactrim tablets, and it wasn't a faulty indicator. It was that General Dynamics plane. There was a wire chafing problem, and they knew about it. That jet isn't safe. I know there have been a number of crashes lately, but we feel it's just isolated incidents of pilot error. Because that's what General Dynamics and the Air Force want us to believe. They're sure not going to tell us the whole fleet screwed up. They're going to fix them, slowly and quietly, one at a time. Well, you've got pilots up there flying now. Colonel, I'm not asking you to do my battles for me. I'm just asking for a fair fight. Please, let me fly those last 15 seconds. Let me be in that cockpit with Ted and find out exactly what happened. Congratulations. What are you doing here? Mary told me uh, you got the simulator. Yeah. I want to fly it for you. You know the rules, Z. No active personnel could take sides in this thing. You wouldn't want to do that, would you? So who are you going to get to do it? Thought I'd ask Charlie Reeves. Yeah. He's good. He's real good. You said if you ever thought I was right about the F-16, you'd stop flying, see? I lied. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. It's got to be in this sequence somewhere. Let's take it from the top again, OK? OK. Chief, could we have the HUD up on the big screen, please? OK. Chief, could we have an EEC warning light, please? That's the electronic engine control. He reaches around to reset it. That's when he turned back to base. Right. Now, could I have an INU failure light, please? That's the inertial navigational unit. OK, now, he dropped 4,000 feet to the ground in exactly 15 seconds, so we got to try to do the same thing. Should we run the tape again? Mm -hmm. All right, Leo, you tell me when. Ready. Go. OK, what do you got, Leo? 19 seconds. Damn, no matter what I do, I cannot drop this plane to the ground in 15 seconds. It's got to be possible Ted did it. Uh, We've only got a few more minutes. Leo, you try it. I flew commercial jets, not F-16s. It's the same principles, just mind the stick. It ain't too forgiving. Chief, set us up from the beginning again. All right. Okay, 4,000 feet, here we go. Give us an EEC warning light, please, Chief. Uh, knock it off, knock it off. 
Lieutenant Lead has a problem too. Join on me. Returning to base. Uh, two's joining on your right, Stallion. What's the problem? We have an eye on you failure, please. Go. Cloud deck, Stallion, talk to me. Whoa, don't pull back on the stick. Wait, you're upside down. Damn, you're right. This bird's dropping fast. That's it. Ted, you were upside down. Wouldn't he know if he was upside down? None of his instruments have failed. he could have crashed the way he did was if he was flying inverted so that when he pulled back on the stick thinking he was going to pop up in the blue sky he actually headed straight down and why was he unable to tell he was upside down some type of electrical malfunction created a problem in his instruments it lied to him no further questions your honor mr Ryder. Here's where it gets rough, and I don't want the jury to see any of it. Keep your eyes straight ahead and your hands folded. Mr. Reeves, if there had been an instrument problem, as you uh, suggest here, should Captain Hardeville had flown into a cloud? Well, if the situation allowed it, no, he shouldn't have. As a matter of fact, that was the cause of his death, wasn't it? It was a contributing factor, yes, but... Mr. Reeves, if you'd been leading this flight, would you have done what he did? If my plane was functioning and malfunctioning that seriously, yes, I would have made very much the same maneuvers as Ted did. You would have flown into the clouds, losing all visibility, making it impossible for your wingman to join onto you. Like I said, Ted's attention was focused inside the cockpit at the problem at hand. Answer the question, please, sir. Well, no. I would have tried not to fly into a cloud, but I wasn't there. Thank you. That's all. As a NASA engineer, you were asked by the plaintiff to review many of the documents regarding Captain Hardeville's plane. Now, let's get back to Block 15, where seven planes still on the assembly line were discovered to have potential wire chafing problems. Do you feel that Captain Hardeville's plane also had this problem? I think it's highly probable, yes, and that the aircraft was unreasonably dangerous. And what was done about this wire chafing problem? Technical order was issued to inspect the planes for evidence of it, and this was to be done at 100 hours of flight time. Do you know how old Captain Hardeville's plane was at the time of the crash? 75.2 hours. And do you think that wire chafing played a role in this crash? Yes, I think that uh, there was a malfunction in the wiring, which uh, resulted in the loss of power to the navigation unit, and the instruments would therefore have failed. No further questions. Mr. Grant, uh, there was no evidence of any fire in that aircraft before impact. Is that right? That's correct. And you have no data to support a conclusion that any of the instruments were not in operation, do you? No, but the uh, attitude readings were way off. Well, the attitude indicator was jarred at impact, was it not? Well, I suppose that, that's possible, yes. But... Well, sir, according to the records, a piece of Ted Hardeville's scalp was found attached to that instrument. Nothing more, Your Honor. Mr. Pace, do you know of any F-16 crashes where there was an electrical problem with the plane? There are a few electrical problems that weren't identified, yes. So because these problems were not positively linked to wire chafing, you are telling the jury that wire chafing is not a potential problem with the F-16? In my opinion, it was not a potential problem. 
That's all I have, Your Honor. Mr. Pace, has General Dynamics ever received a report where uh, an aircraft has been lost due to wire chafing? No, sir. Have they ever received a report of instrument navigation being lost as a result of wire chafing? No, sir, they have not. Have you ever had a report of fire in the wiring? Not to my knowledge, sir. Never has there been a single report of wire chafing causing an aircraft to return to the base. In the entire history of the F-16, 1,000 the United States Air Force and over 2,000 around the world, no report has ever been received. That is correct. Oh, little bear, what a nightmare. Did you quit worrying? We haven't lost yet. Did you see their faces? 2,000 planes, not a single report. They ate up every goddamn word. Look, if there was no chafing, and no electrical problem, then how come Ted turn around and start it back? Because. Took dozens of backroom tablets, threw up in his mask and couldn't see. We'll get all that tomorrow. Without Haller, we don't stand a chance. <sighs> Look at all this. There's got to be something I missed. We've been through that stuff a million times. What's this? Tape for Air Force mechanics. Want anybody to take a look at it? We don't have a three-quarter inch machine. Besides, it's put out by General Dynamics. Probably some PR bullshit. It's not going to tell us anything. Uh. Thanks so much. I know it's late. No, 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 no problem. Nick, you want to roll this for Mrs. Hartable, please? Here, have a seat. Great. Okay, you're all set. Just let me know when you're done. Okay, cool. Thank you. just to the north of our point. Slight trail. Two, take the one to the west. Okay, knock it off. Knock it off. He's got a problem. He's got a problem. The incident you've just witnessed is one that hey, each of us as United States Air Force maintenance professionals work daily to prevent. A dangerous electrical malfunction resulting directly from chafing. We were fortunate this time. Leo, Next time, I'm a KPFC man. I think you better get down here. Electrical disruption on an electrical aircraft like the F-16 can have a variety of effects, anywhere from annoying and frustrating all the way to disastrous. One of the most frequent problems is when the wire harness is pushing up against a protruding screw, which acts like a miniature saw blade, slowly but steadily grinding away at the insulation. The question is not will it cut the wire, but when. Each of these problems may not prevent the aircraft from flying its next sortie, or maybe even its next 10 sorties. But one day, and most likely while in flight, that wire is going to break. That aircraft is going to malfunction. What's wrong? I was just thinking about this lawyer I used to know. He started law school, convinced that one day he was going to go out in the world and make a difference. For a while, he did. For a while, I was a real hero. What happened to him? He got lazy. Maybe a little scared. Started measuring his fights. You forgot that sometimes you got to make a stand. Yeah, well, we all forget that sometimes, right? No. Not you. You are outright fearless. <laughs> Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. 
we find the defendant, General Dynamics, guilty. Order! 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 Order, order, please. Please continue. We find General Dynamics guilty of negligence in designing the aircraft. We find Captain Hardival to be 0% negligent in order that the plaintiff be awarded $3.1 million, 750,000 of this to be held in trust for Kiki Hardival. Thank you, members of the jury. Rest in peace, Ted. Words I can't ignore. It wasn't your fault. Calling to me. Stronger than ever before. For one moment, nothing is out of our hands. Can sense 